So the good old boys club is at it again. I guess in this case, good old boys and girls club. Um, listen to what Trump's UN ambassador pick has been up to. According to a report from Politico, the husband of Kelly Kraft, who has been tabbed by President Donald Trump to replace Nikki Haley at the United Nations, has been a big-time contributor to a majority of the Republican senators who will need to approve her nomination. The report states, Kraft and her wealthy husband, coal magnate Joe Kraft, gave Senator Marco Rubio $5,400 for his 2016 primary and general election campaigns and supported him for president before he dropped out, at which time they switched their allegiance to Trump. Additionally, the nominee also donated the maximum allowed, $2,700, to the campaigns of Todd Young and Ron Johnson that same year. According to Politico, Joe Kraft's contributions to Republicans are nothing new, and he has been giving millions or given millions to Republican causes over the years while being a prolific fundraiser for the GOP. Quote, the couple has donated to the Republican campaign arms of the Senate and of the House and Senate, as well as to political action committees with higher contribution limits and to campaigns for other members of the Senate Republican conference. Politico uh, reports before noting, quote, but the disclosures show how the Crafts concentrated their donations on influential Republicans, oftentimes fighting tough races, who would later send Kelly Craft to Ottawa as ambassador as the Trump administration's representative to one of the country's top trading partners. So, Kelly Craft and her husband are billionaires. And they've been giant contributors to all various Republican causes through dark money channels, through uh, traditional methods and direct channels of funding campaigns and whatnot and individual contributions. And um, this is the way Washington, D.C. works. Now, you're unsurprised by this at this point, but I still feel like it's worth noting because it's disgusting and it needs to change. But it's the same thing with Betsy DeVos, billionaire, fundamentalist Christian. Well, look at that. She got picked to be the head of the Department of Education. What? How's she qualified? She's not. Not at all. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But she's rich. And she funded Republicans. And they said, okay, yeah, we got you. Now, don't go crazy here and think, oh my God, this is solely a Trump thing. No, it's actually not. This is a Washington thing. Barack Obama had many in his cabinet picked by executives at Citibank. It's an uncomfortable fact. It's totally true. So this is the way the system works. And this is... Uh, it shows you how the idea of a meritocracy is laughable. We don't live in a meritocracy. We live in more of a kleptocracy or an oligarchy. So we have moneyed interests, elites, who... Um, they think they're in the position they're in because they're just so much smarter than everybody, but the reality is no. 60% of the wealth in this country is inherited. So, you know, all these rich assholes oftentimes are just getting it from their parents and their parents' parents, and they're part of this class. And so they buy influence, and money talks. And this is how it manifests. And this is why you see the worst assholes in the world who were part of Wall Street destroying the economy are then the assholes who turn around and they make it in the public sector and they set the rules that continues to allow Wall Street to continue to screw all of us. And that's just one example, but there's countless examples, but you get the point. The point is, the entire system is run on corruption. The entire system is run on elites patting each other on the back and screwing over everybody else. And there's no argument for this person to be in this position. But she's likely going to get it. So, we can change it. We can change it. We just have to have clean elections by law. So no more publicly financing of elections. Um, no more... No more favoritism and revolving door and things of that nature. And so we need a strong anti-corruption bill passed in Congress as well as a constitutional amendment to get money out of politics because you can't just do it through a law because the Supreme Court already ruled that money in politics is basically a right. So, um, you know, chances of that happening are very slim, but we need to keep fighting and we need to get to the point where it does happen. At least we change the game to this point in terms of how Democrats, the, the populist left is raising money. They do it almost all through small dollar donations. They don't take corporate PAC money. Many of them don't do big money bundling, although some do. Those are the corporatists who are masking themselves as if they're populist left. But that's a short term fix. The short term fix is only small dollar donations. The long term fix is we need to get clean elections by law implemented. 